uh, faculty and students, uh, ladies and gent gentlemen. Uh, my topic today is uh, powering up Taiwan the nuclear way. I believe I do. Okay. And this is my uh, oh, okay. uh, this is my outline. I'll, I'm going to start from the introduction all the way to the final conclusion. We talk about various uh, aspects of the nuclear power, its impact on the global warming and the pollution and the energy demand and also the excellence at nuclear power plants. Okay, uh, my experience in the nuclear energy is over the last 38 and a half years, I've been working in the various area of uh, nuclear related field, anywhere from the reactor all the way to the severe accident management. Okay, the nuclear reactor is a pressurized vessel okay. uh, with the, its wall is about 20 centimeters thick. It can sustain pressure about up to 90, PA, 90 atmospheric pressure. The essential issue is to keep the reactor core always covered with water. They will never get overheated, no cold meltdown, no radionuclide releases. That's a crucial thing to keep, always keep the nuclear core covered with water. Uh, the nuclear core is com composed of this uh, so-called fuel pellet. It's, uh, each one will produce 61.3 watts for one and a half years. And there are 18 million pellets in the nuclear core. Okay? And we have nuclear rod, which uh, is uh, stacking up of this uh, nuclear fuel pellet. Okay? It's 4.18 meter long. There are over 5,000 rods in uh, reactors. There are over 193 bundles. Each bundle got about, about 100 or more nuclear rods. So those are so-called uh, in the nuclear core and will generate tremendous amount of power. Okay. And uh, this field, some of you have see these cross bars, so-called control blade. They'll be used uh, to automatically shut down the reactor once anything happens. High pressure, low water level, high radionuclide uh, levels. Okay. And besides the automatic shutdown, there's another manual shutdown and another boron injection. So there are three ways to shut down a reactor. Just like the car brakes, you have three type of brakes to stop your car. Okay. So when the during the normal operation, you generate tremendous, tremendous amount of heat, but during the shutdown, you have so-called res residual heat. Okay. And the residual heat will become, when you, when it's uh, full power, each nuclear power plant will be 3,300 megawatts thermal. Okay. For, so after shutting down, in one second, it will drop all the way from 100% to 7%. In, about three, less, a little bit less than four hours, it dropped to about 1%, so it's only 33 megawatt thermal. Okay. Besides uh, the nuclear core, which is uh, in the reactor pressure vessel, you have a containment outside to enclose everything inside this containment. Also, you have the turbine building to generate the power, then uh, the residual heat to remove any the heat from the reactor together with the containment, okay. So the difference between a nuclear power generator and the conventional so-called fossil fuel is just uh, is the energy generating part. The rest, the electrical power generation and the delivering electricity are the same. Okay, uh, we have, uh, for a typical nuclear power plant, we have uh, six high pressure systems and the seven low pressure systems to inject water into the core to keep the core cool. Any one of these water injections uh, would be able to remove the so-called residual heat and keep the nuclear safe, nuclear power plant safe. During the construction of the site, here's the reactor pressure vessel. This is the so-called containment. Yeah, I have this piece of the iron, uh, of the rebar. Okay, you can circulate this around, okay. 
Those are for the construction. Oh, excuse me. For construction of this uh, containment, this is the so-called primary containment. The one outside, this is the secondary containment. Okay. So for the primary content, you have this uh, the rebar. It's 18, number 18 rebar. Each meter will weight 20.3 kilogram. For the regular room, room wise only 2.24 kilogram per meter. For some of the heavy duty one, like the like the 101 tower, it will be 6.4 kilogram per meter. So this is much higher than that one. It's about three times as high, the the density of the steel. And uh, this person, uh, the thickness of the primary containment wall is anywhere from 1.2 to 2 meters. So it can sustain very high pressure, up to about three to four atmospheric pressure. Okay. So to test this uh, uh, containment wall, uh, they ran this uh, F4 Mirage fighter with 770 kilometers per hour, which is about 60% of the sonic velocity, and hit the wall. It's only six centimeters out of 120 centimeters, so only one twentieth one dent. So the, the wall is retained, okay. And uh, besides, uh, if you have any kind of small amount of radionuclide generated in the containment, you have this so-called standby gas treatment system uh, ha having the reason, re reason to subscribe the, nu the radionuclide. So whatever comes out of the, the stack is very, it's minimal. Okay. So we have several things. One is uh, we have emerging core cooling to keep the core cool. We have the post-accident heat removal to remove the heat. Then we have, we'll, if any radionuclide generate transport, it will be stayed in this uh, containment. So the integrity will be, will be able to sustain. Then the radionuclide retention will be all retained in this containment. Okay. Even for the uh, accident of the Fukushima type, uh, the con primary containment is sustained. Okay. Yes. So does uh, the, the one for the Three Mile Island happen in the United States. Or the containment integrity sustained. Okay. Okay. So we have several barriers. We have so-called defense in depth and multiple barriers. We have many barriers, the fuel pallet, cladding, reactor control, and three ways to shut down the reactors. We have the reactor cooling water to keep the core cool. We have the reactor pressure vessel to sustain very high pressure up to about 90 atmospheric pressure. We have the emergency cooling, okay, and finally we have this containment to sustain about three to four times of the atmospheric pressure. So, so the so-called this uh, defense, defense in depth philosophy. There are three things ways to prevent the accident from happening. Yeah, there are so many water injection systems to keep the core cool, okay. And the, the second one is to provide multiple barriers for protection. And the third one is to mitigate the progression once the uh, accident happens. Okay. So if you look at all the, uh, this, uh, this uh, risk associated with the existence of the nuclear power, there's a 100 nuclear power plant. Okay. So we are, uh, right now we have about 400 nuclear power plants in the world. Okay. So it will be, uh, will be, will be uh, uh, 0 0.004 per year. If we include all the total main cost exit, it will be one to 10 per year, like if a big uh, airplane crash. So the occurrence of them for people, to, for 10, 100 people to die is relatively low, but for the, for the total main cost exit will be about one per year. Okay. okay. Uh, Oh, this is like a tiger in a zoo. If you live in a place where uh, a zoo is located, you don't worry about tiger from getting out of the zoo because there are so many safety fe features to contain the animal. We have cages, you have fences, and you have deep ditches, so in case this so-called multi-barrier. And also you can catch the animal once it's getting out you using tran tranquilized guns to, uh, to, to to make the animal immobile, so you can bring the animal back to the zoo, back to its cage. We call that mitigation. Okay. 
Okay, the impact of global warming and air pollution, you have this uh, desertific desertif desertification of Earth, melt ice at the North and South Pole, rise, rise of the seawater, extremes of weather, it becomes either very cold or very hot, and you have substantial amount of haze in atmosphere. Okay, so reduction of this, uh, one example is the reduction of the agricultural product. Last year, there was a severe drought happening in California and uh, led to two billion US dollar loss, also 15,000 job loss because uh, you don't have uh, enough agricultural product for, for people to work. Okay. So let's just one typical example. Yeah, waste, you, th this is uh, ice at the North Pole. That was several years ago, now it's got substantially reduced. As a result, those uh, ice, they can reflect reflect the, the heat back to the atmosphere. If you have a so-called ocean dark blue, it will absorb heat. That's one way to absorb the heat. Okay. Another one is uh, like in, in Beijing, China, it broke the 26-year record, so, so cold. Even some of the ice in the bay become frozen. Okay. That's severe cold in Russia, 200 people died of frozen or more than 1,000 1, files from heating. Okay. The temperature dropped to as low as 40 degrees, minus 40 degrees centigrade. Yeah, this, uh, this is one of the truck in Ukraine. It's a winter storm. It's all bur buried by the storm, by the snow. Okay. Uh, the hot, the heat wave in the India, the, just, just a few, uh, half a month ago, led to two 2,200 deaths. Even the, the, the temperature gets as high as 40 degrees centigrade. The zebra crossing zone become molten, as you can see. Okay. Like the, what happened here recently, here at uh, Taoyuan, where the Ximen Dam, uh, it's a record low of water during, during, uh, during its uh, last 49 years. Okay. And we have water rationing for two weeks. Uh, all of a sudden, we have the seasonal rain for two weeks, then it gets filled up again. Okay. So there's a very famous uh, documentary film, uh, Under the Dome, by uh, Jin Chai in China. She estimated about 500,000 deaths was in China was uh, resulting from, the, from those uh, po polluted air. I just roughly estimated just by ratio of the population will be cause about 9,000 deaths in Taiwan as a result of these poor air qualities. And in Taiwan, 70% of the power is generated by the fossil fuel, with 50% uh, was generated by the burning coal. Okay. And the poor quality in Taiwan led to 15% probability increase uh, of increase in suffering lung cancer and the children asthma. And another 25% for risk of getting strokes, heart disease, and the chronic respiratory disease. Okay, so as a result of this uh, carbon dioxide, the grow, they just shield the earth. So the, the sun coming to the earth will be trapped by, the, by this layer of uh, carbon dioxide, so-called the greenhouse effect. Okay, so the, that's a key result of those global warming. Okay, so let's look at uh, all those power generating options we have for the coal, oil, and natural gas, anywhere from, and compared to the nuclear power, uh, it's about 45 times, anywhere from 30 to 40 times of the coal will be generated. Okay, uh, look at the resources for all those uh, uh, options. So all your to core will be anywhere from 40 to 260 years. For the nuclear power, can only it's about 48 years. But if you can reprocessing uh, those uh, fuel, it can sustain 10 times more to 480 years. So in the during the in the duration, which we do not have very reliable renewable energy. Uh, the nuclear power is one of the choices we must have. Okay. Look at the world population, you go all the way to 7 billion. Yeah. 
people in the world. Okay, the, as you can see, the, the world energy consumption is go, going up. This one, that's just one so-called quadrillion BTU per day. So it's about 340. Now it's 215, so 60% 60, 60 from 1990 to 2015. And you can see, as the population gets up and the more people are enjoying life, there will be more energy demand. Okay. As you can see, the nuclear power and the uh, biofuels, a uh, small amount, the, and the hydroelectric, both of those three are small amount. The majority are natural gas, oil, and the coal. It's getting up. Okay. And as you can see, uh, these three things, the coal fire, coal, gas, coal, and the oils, it's about 70% of the overall energy will be produced by those so-called fossil fuel type of thing. And in the meantime, the carbon dioxide concentration is getting out anywhere from 310 parts per million by volume to all the way to about 385. Okay. And as a result of that, the warming up of the temperature is getting up. The, the first one is uh, due to the Rama sensors. You have uh, this uh, steam steam engine. The second part is due to the uh, due to the China and the India. Yeah, they have become more modernized. They are using a lot of more energy. As you can see uh, from this uh, chart, uh, this is for the UK. This is for the U United Sta States. And China is uh, they start from 18, uh, 1987. They become more their modernization started in 1987, go all the way. Now it's become the world's largest energy user in China. Okay. Like uh, these, those are the nuclear power plant in China. They are very aggressive. They are trying to build about around 200 over the long term period of time. The India is another big country. They will have a lot of uh, nuclear power generation. And even Saudi Arabia, they are oil producing, they are planning, they have 16 nuclear power plants in, plan in the future. And this United Arab Emirates, they are oil producing country, they, they have about 14 plants in the future. So, so far, the worldwide, we have uh, 436 existing plants in operation. I mean, over the long term, we have another about four, 